Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Clipper firmware and how we used it in the Piper tool changing printers. First of all, to install Clipper, it requires a little bit of knowledge, and there already are some videos out there on installing Clipper, uh, most notably Tom's Basement and a couple others. Um, but you basically SSH into it and follow this instruction guide. It's not too terribly hard. Make sure you go step by step. Uh, the hardest part, in my opinion, is getting the uh, serial by ID or serial by path. Um, we had to use serial by path because we used a lot of the same Arduinos uh, in our uh, printers, and that causes um, conflicts. So if you go serial by path and always plug them into the same USB port, you can get around the serial by ID issues, and that's an issue here. Um, here we go. What's my serial port? And uh, do that. Um, definitely use an, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus if you're going to be doing this because it takes all the heavy lifting onto the uh, Raspberry Pi. And so if you try it with an older Raspberry Pi and you have a couple video streams and everything else, it can slow down the printer. I've seen that happen. So once you've installed it and you've gotten it all squared away, the next step would be to uh, SSH into the printer and modify the printer.config file. And what we have here, actually, I'll take a break, step back, is I win SCP'd into it, and that lets you access the files um, on it. You can also do a Octoprint plugin for Clipper as well, which I highly recommend. Let's you do scripts and stuff like that. We'll cover that in a little bit. But for the basic configuration, it's best to, to do this. So I'm going to go over this section by section and talk about what's going on in the printer and how we can make this work. So we have lights in this printer. That's optional. Um, and we'll cover the script to turn the lights on and off in a bit. Um, but the tool changing ability, you always have to have a tool changer. And this part here is arbitrary. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so I named it Tool S for Tool Servo. And then moving right along, we have the stepper X and Y movements, standard for core XY. And then the extruders. Um, now I know this looks really complicated and a lot of stuff going on. So I go down to the bottom and look at the kinematics. So of course we're using core XY. We set our max velocity and everything else here. And here we set all of the Arduinos that we're using. Um, MCU, of course, for the main one. Z for the Z control. And then for the uh, nine heads, we're using three different Arduinos here. So scrolling back up again, the extruders, we have uh, um, the way Clipper works is you can do colon, the, 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 the command colon, the control board that you're using colon, and then the pin number that you're using. So for example, this is on the MCU head one, and uh, this is the extruders using the X stepper pins for this. Each one of our ramps boards is only powering three extruders because there's only three heater outputs on each ramps board. So that's why we're doing that. Now if you notice here, the deactivate G-code and activate G-code, this is the magic that allows the tool changer to happen. Um, otherwise we'd have to program each tool changer in in G-code and that would be a royal pain. So what we do for the offsets too is uh, um, because the print heads are not all perfectly aligned, no 3D printer with tool changing has all the heads perfectly aligned with each other um, out of the factory. So you have to do software offsets to compensate for that. So anyway, the deactivate G-code is go into position, uh, X and Y, drive forward and Y, release the servo, and then push it the rest of the way in the docking mechanism, and then back out. The back out is important because if you just stop and then you try to home the machine, obviously it's the wing nut's going to catch on the idler and it's going to try to tear the uh, tool head in half. And then the activate G-code is very similar. It goes in the same position. It goes forward. It locks the servo to grab the uh, tool. M400 is important here. M400 will pause the printer until all the G-code and the buffer is done. Otherwise, the wing nut will uh, um, spin too early 
and it won't grab in time, it won't wait for the servo to grab the tool. Then it backs out, goes a little ways out, and then set G-code offset. Now this is tool zero. Tool zero does not allow any special offsets to be set, so this code is ignored for this head, but if you look at the next one, which is basically the same thing, except of course the pin numbers are different, and the X value is different, um, this one has some offsets in here. As you can see, our offsets are not great, uh, 2.4 millimeters off, but it works, and it, if, as long as you tune it right, it works accurately. So as you can see, extruder 2, extruder 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so of course it's 0 through 9. We, here we have the uh, heater cooling fan, extruder fan, so we have pin 9 um, on the main MCU which is monitoring the temperatures on all nine extruders and will turn on if any of the nine extruders get hot enough. Heat bed, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. We had issues with this printer um, because the heaters were too powerful. So we had to change the uh, control to watermark and make the heaters not as powerful so we don't get as quick heating, but it also doesn't heat and cool the bed as quickly, causing the prints to pop off or getting much better print adhesion doing that. Um, now there are some sp there's some special code for the Piper series printers in Clipper that allows a moving gantry to be leveled and that's why we have a ZMCU pretty much just for the uh, Z stepper drivers, the Z stepper motors. Um, so we have Z, Z1, Z2, Z3, so that's the four Z motors in each corner that lift and lower the gantry. And we do that because we can do quad gantry leveling, which will allow it to probe in each corner and level the gantry to the bed. And that's super, super useful so that if you move the printer or print fails or you lose power or something like that, you can re-level the gantry instead of having to go in there and move each stepper motor individually and it's a real nightmare. I did that originally with the Piper 2 V1, and uh, this is so much better. <laughs> um, this is a Z-probe height. I'm using in this printer a mechanical switch, so this number gets to be tuned to match nozzle zero, or extruder zero, because, like I said, there's no offsets available on the extruder. BL Touch, we're not using that anymore, so as you can see, it's all commented out but that code is there. Homing override. This is complicated because we use a um, special tool for homing. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it because if it loses the tool change on homing, there's nothing to keep it from just slamming into the bottom of the machine and breaking the bed. Um, I guess I could put a danger override if it goes below a certain amount, um, but putting the tool changing the Z leveling into the tool changing also means that it takes forever to home. It takes a good 45 seconds to a minute to home this machine, and when you're working on it, it just takes forever. Um, but you can see this uh, lifts the Z axis 20 millimeters, goes to tool zero so that we have a known tool state for our G code, undocks, then it goes to the home switch docks in the home switch, waits, goes in the center of the bed, does a home for the Z gantry, and then goes back and redocks back to tool 1 again, or tool 0, sorry, excuse me, tool 0, so that that way it knows exactly where, what tool it's in, and it can then switch to whatever tool it wishes to print with. Here's the gantry leveling that we talked about. Um, as you can see, you use the gantry corners, uh, this is where the motors are located, and then this is where it actually probes. And you have to iterative run it, iteratively run it a couple times, run it several times in a row to get it exactly. But it's it's pretty good on one or two runs. Uh, bed mesh leveling, that's all self-explanatory. Uh, we're doing 36 probes for our big printer. You can probably get away with a little bit more, to be honest, for a bed of that size. Um, and then we're back to the bottom here again, where we have the uh, the MCUs, the five different ramps boards that we're doing. And as you can see, we're doing by path instead of by ID, 
because if we did it by uh, by ID, a lot of these would be the same. We have conflicts, we wouldn't know which one's which, and it would be a big nightmare. Um, but as you can see, we're using some hubs here. Um, if you if you know Unix and uh, Linux, sorry, and uh, USB controls, uh, Core X Y, and then we have macros. Macros are super useful in Clipper. Uh, we have load Z probe, unload Z probe. Um, and those allow us to uh, load and unload the Z-probe so that we can do quad gantry leveling because if we go to the printer you can see all these macros that I have here including load Z-probe and unload Z-probe. We have bed mesh leveling, quad gantry leveling, I can turn the lights on and off, um, e-stop of course, drop the tool, grab a tool, um, and you can do all that. You have the clipper interface which you can get the status from the printer, well, if it's not printing. And then you can go to OctoClipper as a plugin that you can put into Clipper, uh, OctoPrint, and you can set up macros. So, for example, this, uh, you can see the commands for, uh, like, the lights on, lights off, quad gantry leveling, bed mesh calibrate, and you can see the macros here that we've set up. And, of course, you can do whatever macros you want with G-Code, which is super useful. Um, I think the only thing that I haven't figured out yet is how to do if-thens, and I'm going to do that eventually so that we can make sure that it grabs a tool when it does a tool change. I'll put a little micro switch or a Hall Effect sensor in a magnet or something like that so that it knows when it grabs a head so it won't have the issues that I was talking about or just drops a head. It'll be able to pause and wait for you to fix it. Um, not that we're having a lot of tool drops, but it still is a cause of print failure, and any way you can mitigate a print failure is good, in my opinion. Bed leveling, clipper configuration. So this is the same as this, except you don't have to win SCP into it every time. You can just grab it and go. Um, the other thing, too, to note is if I were to hit the Save button right here, it will restart my print because it restarts Clipper, the Clipper service on the Raspberry Pi, and then reconnects to all the Arduinos. Um, so I'm not going to hit Save now because it'll end my print. I'm printing parts for uh, the Polar V2 so we can do an assembly video. Um, but uh, yeah, the, so those are all the options for Clipper. Um, well, not all the options. There's tons of options for Clipper. Um, if you go to the Clipper webpage, and go to config and go to examples. There's all these examples including the extras which has some really cool features in here that I haven't seen on anything else except for potentially Duet which hopefully we'll be playing with soon. Uh, we may switch this printer over to Duet just for just to try it out and see what it's like and do some uh, good experimentation with it. But uh, um, yeah, customize homing, we're using that. Um, all these great features in here, macros. Um, so it's it's a really it's a really good firmware to play with. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to people that are just getting started with Linux or just getting started with 3D printing. But it is a necessi necessity to uh, use Clipper or something like that um, to get a big tool changer like this to work. And then of course we have the bed mesh leveling and everything else down here, which you should not edit this part. One thing to note about Clipper is that it does not let you move um, your XY gantry if you have not homed Z because of this bed mesh leveling. So if you're going to do a lot of troubleshooting with it, you can just go ahead and grab this section here and delete it so that you don't have to home Z to do the XY, which is pretty useful if you're going to do a lot of XY testing on a tool changer. Um, so you don't have to home the Z each and every time, which, like I said, on this printer takes a good minute. Um, but yeah, so that's Clipper in a nutshell, how we're using it for the uh, for the big piper. And what I can do is I can bring up the little piper config, and we can take a look at that one too, and see how that one's different. I'm um, just grabbing it over here. As you can see, we're printing with this one too. Um, we're going to go here. I'm going to go to OctoClipper, Clipper config. And you can see that this config file is pretty much the same. We have the extruder with the offsets. The servo angles, of course, are different. 
Um, and you can do constants for these. That's something I'm going to do eventually is uh, set the servo angles so they're constant so that if the servo, you replace the servo or something like that, you don't have to go through each and every extruder and change it out, which is not a big deal with this printer, but with the Big Piper, of course, it can get a little arduous. Um, yeah, we have five heads on this one. We have, I think, two control boards on this one. Yeah, and we did uh, by ID on this one because we're using a do and a uh, ramps board. So they're different IDs, so we don't have to worry about the conflicting IDs. You can see the heater fans and everything else. Um, this one uses a uh, inductive probe on the Z carriage. So you can see that it just homes, it lifts the Z axis, homes XY, goes to an arbitrary point in the bed, and level Z. So it's a much easier homing override code. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video was informative. If you guys like these software overviews, please do let me know. Um, I'd be happy to do more, happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, until then, happy printing, and uh, have a great day.